All right, hello once again, Jeff Scott of Rankin Technical College. I've been going through a series of video presentations I've created for our textbook, ASP.NET MVC with Entity Framework and CSS by Lee Naylor. This is the textbook for the Rankin Technical College AWD Application Web Development 1111 .NET Framework with Web Databases class. We are now about to go over chapter 15 of 18. I've gone over and done lectures so far for the first eight chapters, part of chapter 9. Skip chapters 10, 11, 12, and 13, although I will go back to them shortly, and have done 14. So, chapter 15, which starts in our book on page 485. It's entitled Styling the Homepage. This chapter, it says here, introduces some additional features of CSS including using line height and border radius for newer type of special effects, as well as controlling font weight and font size. All right, we also talk about float, so we can align things um, next to each other or on the left-hand side of the screen or on the right-hand side of the screen, and how to use the clear property if you want floating to go back away. All right, I have downloaded the chapter 14. So... It says we are going to start this chapter by introducing a few CSS concepts. We'll add a new style for the footer to make it a sky blue color with rounded corners and white text rather than the standard blue added to the body in the previous chapter. Well, before we do that, that's the end in mind. That's what we want this to look like. But if we bring this up for chapter 14, which is our latest and greatest, so I'm going to get rid of the chapter 13. And if we look here, that's what it looks like right now. That's our footer. I know it's a little hard to see. But let's come in and start making changes. All right? So let's grab this. Let's add this to our store.css file that we worked on in the last chapter, which is right here. And we'll put it down at the bottom. Now think about what this stuff in here means. All right, we want a bottom margin here of 20 pixels. So this should push and add 20 more pixels of margin at the very bottom of the screen. This should change the background color to a deep sky blue, and it should change our font color to white. So what is that changing? Well, earlier for our body, we had the background color of white. Now the background color for just our footer will be deep sky blue. We had a margin of zero auto, all right? And we now will have a margin just bottom of 20 pixels. So we'll still have zero margin for top right and left. Finally, our default color was this RGB. Let's grab this. Let's try to throw that into here and see if we can find out what that color is. So it should, I guess, be looking like this. All right. Almost no red, half green, and a little more than half blue. Okay. All right. So we're changing that from that color to a font color of white. All right. So let's save this. And are we told to run it yet? Sure. So the footer should now appear, oops, it should now look like this when we get done. Well, let's take a look. So we'll go back here. Always make sure you know this already to save before you build. Now, hopefully we're not going to get an error. Yeah, we're still getting an error here. Doggone it. So it may not show any changes. And it is not. It says one or more errors occurred when running IIS Express. Click here for more information. So I'm clicking there. It says the specified port is in use. Well, that's probably because I was running that previously. So let's let's go back, close up a bunch of stuff that I probably don't need. All right. So let's save it and try it again. Oh, brother. 
still says that port is in use. Well, let's do this. This was the baby store back, I, whoops, one of these. This is the chapter 13 one. So, file, exit. All right. Now, what else is here that could be running? I guess it's possible that the same port is being used for where I'm doing the taping here. I don't know. But I'm going to try it again. So I'm going to save and try running it one more time. Still get the error. So this is bad. I am able to explain things to you, but I'm not able to show you how they're actually physically changing. I don't like that, but I don't know what else to do. When we're done, we will take a look at the completed Chapter 15, and hopefully that will show us exactly what things are supposed to look like. But my guess is once this loads, it will not look any different. See, our color has not changed. Now, if we try this, no idea with what I'm about to do, if it's going to work or not. Knowing my luck today, it probably won't work. But I'm going to come in here. I'm going to grab the Chapter 15 source, copy it, paste it. There's that. We'll call that CH15. So let's bring that one up. So that's going to bring up this solution. And once it does, We will come in here, we will again go to our views, home, and attempt to open up and view in the browser our page. I want to see if on chapter 15, boy oh boy, holy moly, the other one is not open anymore, I'm trying to figure out where it's getting that, that it says the port is in use. Okay, that may have been it right there. The Chapter 14 one was still running, so let's double check. rid of that. Try to run this chapter 15 one. Make sure we're running the right one. File. File. Save as. This is chapter 15, so... Cancel. Try to run that. I'm going to still be getting my error. Hopefully I won't be getting an error saying that the port is in use. Okay. What I want to see on here is did our footer change so that it's the sky blue or whatever it said it was background or not.
not doing bad time wise. We're at 10 minutes here. There we go. Did it change the color? No, it did not. Doggone it. I'll have to see if I can fix that. It says product references NuGet packages that are missing on this computer. All right, we'll have to take a look at that and see if we can figure out what the heck the problem with that is. Okay. All right, I want to stop the run because that's the chapter 15. And go back to my chapter 14. Let's get rid of that also. All right. So, that's the way it should have looked. All right, it should have changed the background color and the text color, but it did not. Okay, using line height to vertically align text. Then they wanted us to add a height of 30 pixels. Hopefully what you notice is if you look at the size here, see how it's kind of squished? And then you look at it. So if you look at it here, as opposed to looking at it here, it doesn't look as squished. All right, so we want to copy that in, add that to our file. which is our content store.css file. How did I lose that? This is 14. Don't know what happened. My goodness. Well, let's just add all of it. Okay. We already talked about the margin, etc. Again, the only thing that's different in here is the height is set to 30 pixels. All right. The next thing we want to do is set the line height. Notice what that's going to do is it's going to basically, for lack of better words, it's going to center it height-wise. Semicolon right there. We go. I don't know what happened there. Oh, wait, one, something has goofed up. So the text should now be vertically aligned in the center. Good. All right, then they want some padding. So notice the difference between this, where it's pretty much pushed up against it, and here, where we've added padding. Padding can dramatically change the way elements on a page look. All right, and I mean, again, is that that important? It can be, because like I said, it can dramatically change the look and feel of something. Then we want to add rounded corners by adding the border radius. So notice the difference between this, where the corners are squared, and this, where they're now rounded. Now again, do you have to do that? Of course not. And older browsers, by and large, will not recognize that. So they'll still look squared. But that's considered to be more in vogue today and to look a little bit nicer. All right. So the next thing we want to do is we want to come in here and style our home page headings. All right. By using font weights 
and M values for font size. So let's bring this in. Copy it to the clipboard. Now, when you start to do this, if you look on the screen here, okay, this was my body stuff. This was the animation stuff. All right, so I could put in here, for example, if it's a CSS file for comments, I could put in here, for example, whoops, uh, global body settings. All right. I don't know how I lost that. I guess I removed it. but So there's that. All right. Then I can come down here and say these are my animation settings. Then come down here and say, this is the actual animation. Oops. Finally, this is stuff for the footer. So why am I telling you that? I mean, who cares? Well, footer's at the bottom of the page. So the stuff that I add right here for my H1 and H2, I'm going to add that above the footer. You can put your CSS virtually anywhere you want it to be, but there should be some semblance of order as far as where it goes. So this says our H1 and H2 tags should have a color of hot pink, a font size of two M's, and they should be bold. Now let's talk for a minute about M's. When you use M's, E-M, that's basically how much space it, it, it needs to put the letter M in. And you use percentages. Those are what are known as relative units of measure. So they will try to adjust themselves based on where what you're using to look at the website. Um, a cell phone versus a tablet versus a laptop versus a desktop. On the other hand, notice down here we used pixels. Those are absolute units of measurements. You really should strive as much as you can to use M's and or percentages as opposed to pixels. All right. Now, two M's, one M is equal to 16 pixels. So this is the same thing as though I said 32 pixels except, again, it's a relative unit of measure. All right, enough of the sermon. Let's see where we are time-wise. We are at 19 minutes almost, so I think that's what this is supposed to do here. All right, I'm going to come back, and before we talk about floats, which is the next topic right here, before we get into that, all right, let's stop and we will come back to that in just a moment.